Um, so I want to talk a little bit today about Image Perfect, and then we'll jump into a different session where we do Q and A. Just a just a thing about me, a um, little background. I've been with Spandex um, for about six years now. I ran our business in Australia, where we were uh, one of the leaders in the group uh, on Image Perfect. And Spandex is actually the largest sign supply distributor in the world. So we're based in Switzerland. We have 23 uh, different countries that we um, are live and active in. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, running Arlon's business in Europe. And prior to that, I was a, a partner at Fellers for about 12 years. So a little bit about me. Um, the second thing that I want to go into is I want to give you information that you can use. So I don't want to give you a bunch of technical hoo-ha and stuff that's going to be uh, potentially an issue for you to, to sort through. So I want to go through the basics. I want to talk about just a couple products, um, uh, starting with the basics. And if I tell you something that's totally obvious, then hey, when in the Q&A, you can say, why'd you tell us that? That's totally obvious. But um, a little bit of background about, um, about Spandex. So Spandex was started in England in 1976. It was started by a couple named Charlie and Mary Dobson. Um, they met in art school, believe it or not. And um, in 19, they started, they actually started the, the company in the basement of their rental house. Um, in 1985, they started doing computer cut vinyls. Um, you could get them in black, white, red, blue, green, maybe orange, but you couldn't get anything else. And they all had names like, uh, you know, um, blue 117 and red 115 and things like that. So Mary was a, a design student and what she decided she wanted to do was come out with more colors and name the colors. So they came out with Cosmos Blue, Blueberry, which we all see today, Cardinal Red, these kind of things. Um, and in 1985, we actually bought the factory that was making the vinyls to have more control over that. So we've got a factory. We've been um, We've been at that factory. It's in England, outside of Manchester. Um, we've been in it since 1985. In mid-90s, we started making digital films, first water-based and then eco-solvent, solvent, et cetera. Um, so we, uh, we've we been doing it for a very long time. Um, we are the only distributor that I'm aware of that owns a, a production factory. Um, and we've been doing it almost as long as uh, 3M and Avery and all these guys. So just a little bit about uh, spandex and the line and all that stuff. Um, regarding, uh, regarding Image Perfect, so Image Perfect is, is new to the United States. Um, in many countries around the world, it's the number one, number two, or number three brands. Um, it's known as a very high-end uh, film. It's, um, it's competitive against all the major brands. Um, but we're also very well known for having some unique films. So I just want to go through a few of those for you today. Um, by the way, um, production capacity is something I forgot to mention. Um, out of that plant, we, we can make about 20,000 rolls a month. Okay. So that's a, gives you a ballpark of, of where we are at a production level. Um, so I want to talk about a few products. Um, first of all, I want to talk about some some really interesting fleet films, and I'm just going to put these in front of the screen and show them to you. So we have a, a film. It's called uh, 2578 Super Glide. OK, the PA stands for perfect apply, which for you guys means air release. This film is this film is totally unique. Um, it's actually what we call an engineered calendared film. So it's not a cast traditional cast film, but it's not a traditional calendar film as well. It can be used, it can do about 90% of what a traditional cast film does for about 25% less money. So when you're doing flat side fleets, when you're going top to bottom, um, generally without rivets, or you're doing uh, full wraps on things that don't have a bunch of complex curves, this is a great product, um, regional supply, sells it for i think something like 900 dollars a kit or even less so um it's a great value and fantastic for doing fleet applications it also has what's called a, a we call it a super glide adhesive which means it's very slidable okay that's interesting fleet product the thing about it that's that's totally unique in north america is that it's two mil and the laminate's two mil so it's the same as a cast 
and there's no other uh, no other engineered polymeric in uh, in America that is the same thickness as a cast. So it'll perform just like a cast film for you. The other product uh, on the fleet side, we call it 2574 PA. Again, PA means air release. And this is a reflective film. So it can actually wrap a vehicle. Um, there's very few, as you guys know, reflective films that can be used for wraps. This is one that can. Um, obviously, with any kind of reflective film, if you reposition it a lot, you can get some braking. Although our brake lines tend to come, uh, they're a lot more difficult to create brake lines in our product than other products, even, uh, even products by the leading brands. So uh, full vehicle wraps, sides of fleets, things like that, a great reflective film. And again, um, because we're coating it ourselves, uh, it's, it's, you get a very good value for it. Okay. Um, one of the areas that we're very specialized in is walls, windows, and floors. So I want to go through a few of those products real quick. Um, first of all, we have a product called 2572 PA. Um, this is a high tack film. Um, what happened was when I was at our lawn, we had DPF 8000, which is a fantastic film, but everyone knows that it shrinks. So we went out to set a, uh, up a film that's high tack and doesn't shrink. So what we did is we created this product, um, very high tack, um, not quite as high tack as, as the Arlon. It's about probably in the 90 to 92% range as far as the tack level compared to the Arlon, but it has air release. So it can also be repositioned on, on application. Very interesting film, high tack, and again, a great value. Um, we have a whole series of what we call decorative window films. So you guys might know this as etched glass. Um, there's another name that people call it. Um, there's a couple more names. Um, Silver Frost, um, Avery and 3M have frosted films. These There's about six different finishes here. Um, ask your regional sales rep to give you a, a color chart. They actually have the actual cutouts of the product and the color chart. Great film when uh, someone's wanting to do etched glass. It gives them a, a choice of five or six different finishes. It's also one of the few films that can be wet applied. So it's a solvent-based adhesive. You can actually wet apply it. It comes in air release, which you do not want to wet apply, wet apply and non-air release, which you can easily wet apply. Um, we have a perforated window film um, that's really neat because it's got a couple features that many of these films don't have. And 20 years in the industry and I still can't release a product, but there you go. So the first thing you want to check about a, a perforated window film you need to make sure that it has actually a clear adhesive and that it's a dual layer film. So our film is laminated. It looks black on the back, but that's the black film. It's white on the front with a white film that are laminated together in production. So it has a clear adhesive, which is critical um, because if you have a black adhesive, which a lot of the less expensive films now have black adhesive, when you try to pull that off your window, it will leave stains forever. You'll never get them out. Um, our film also has what's called a dual liner. So you can't see it on here, but you can certainly feel it. Um, it has little uh, holes that the ink can go into. We call them ink wells. So you can UV print on this without clogging the holes. Um, it's an all-purpose film. We call it 2710. Um, it's, a, it's up to three years, and uh, it's a fantastic value. Um, finally, on the walls, windows, floor sides, we have a floor laminate. So this is a textured laminate. Uh, right now, the code is... 2830204. Um, it's uh, a floor laminate textured, anti slip properties. Again, a great value and uh, it can be used with any floor graphic. So, one thing that uh, I wanted to talk about real quickly is um, how vinyl's produced. Maybe I should have said this at the beginning, but it, people get confused with, um, with vinyls, cast, calendar, and whatnot. But what we need to understand is all the vinyls come with two components. One is, plas uh, is PVC, okay? This is PVC, looks kind of like salt, okay? The other is plasticizer. This looks like, it kind of looks like baby oil. So every vinyl that you, that you use in your business is comprised of these two elements, um, plus some little extra um, hardeners or tints or things like that. And that's what you gotta understand. Monomeric, polymeric, five year, 10 year, one year, they're all made of the same key ingredients, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, there's three basic parts. There's, um, there's the film. Let me bring this sample back over here for you. 
all vinyls are, are comprised the same way. There's the film, which is right here, okay? There's the adhesive that's applied to the back, and there's the liner. So you can actually understand the differences in the in the products by understanding the differences in, you know, the film, the, uh, the um, adhesive may be solvent-based, it may be water-based, the liner may be a single side, it may be a craft paper liner, it may be double side PE coated. So you can easily judge the differences by comparing those three components of a product. We also, um, one of the things that, that Image Perfect does, we provide uh, comparison charts. Let me grab one here. So we can buy, provide comparison charts to other products over here, other products where we can actually compare those things. What, for example, what's the ultimate tack? Uh, how tacky is it after 24 hours? Uh, for one of our films, it might be at 18 Newton. For the competitive film, it might be at 12 Newton or 14 Newton. But there's all sorts of uh, information that your regional supply rep can get you regarding the films, and they can tell you how they technically compare to everyone else. Um, that's all I wanted to go over today. Just give you a brief overview on Image Perfect in the, uh, in the films and a little bit about vinyl. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you as soon as I transition this. I wanted to see if there's any questions, anything at all regarding uh, vinyl, regarding applications, regarding our industry, uh, any rumors that you want to know about, anything like that. Um, happy to answer any of that. Uh, you can type a message, you can ask a message, um, whatever you'd like, uh, happy to do so. Or you can also reach me privately. It's uh, if you'd like to, to ask a private question and the email address is David dot Nidell, that's n-e-i-d-e-l-l -L, at spandex.com dot a-u don't forget the dot a-u it's because i was in australia for a few years uh, again david dot Nidell at spandex.com dot a-u i've got a question here uh, that question is what is the best film you recommend for small shallow channels which with image perfect i do a lot of wraps on Freightliner Cascadia's, and I've had failures with media popping out of the channels. Um, that's a really good question. And um, what I will tell you is the number one complaint with fleet films is channel popping. Okay. Um, when I was at Arlon, we would get that complaint weekly. Um, before that, when I was at Fellers, we'd get that complaint weekly with 3M and Avery and everything. So it's a really difficult um, application the the answer is it depends on a couple things so first off it depends on how deep the channel is and how steep the channel is um obviously the more you're stretching a film the more uh the the better the chance that it's going to pop out um you never want to uh, let's talk about application for a second before we talk about a film so i'm going to draw a little picture here so Let's say, let's say that is a channel that you're going into, okay? Historically, okay, that line I drew here, let's say that is the actual film. Historically, everyone recommended that you put the film here, put the film here, and then you put heat and stretch it down into a channel like that, okay? Um, here's what I'll tell you thinking has has continued on this and it's it's been modified because this is actually the worst thing you can do in a channel you never want to put the pressure like that because you'll get a lot more stretch in the film and you'll actually break the adhesive up in the corner so what you actually want to do is you want to uh do something more like this You want to stretch the film like that. and then what you're going to do is you're going to heat it in this section and you're going to press it down here and then you're going to gradually bring your heat up and press it down here gradually bring your heat up and press it down here a perfect installation into a, a channel you'll actually see the image will be just a tiny bit distorted in this area because then the stretch happens here the stretch happens as a, at a, on a flat surface right here versus the stretch happens here. When the stretch happens here, it's 100% going to pop out. doesn't matter what film you use. The only way to get it to not pop out is to use primer. Okay. Um, so anyway, 
I'm hoping that uh, everyone can see and in, 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 uh, see and hear that. Um, that's application technique. Um, there's there's uh, videos on that. One of the best video series is actually the Arlon Rapid Write video series where they actually talk about channel installation. It works pretty good. Um, as far as film goes, you know what? The reality is, is all these films are pretty good these days. Um, most of the, and I hate to say this, okay, but most of these channel failures happen because number one, we're asking the film to do something that it that is very difficult for it to do. Number two, um, a lot of us use these techniques that were taught, you know, a while back, and um, we need to learn the new techniques in order to ensure that that we have the best chance of success. Um, anytime you're going into a channel, uh, concave channels are the worst, deeper channels, steeper channels are the worst. Um, uh, number one, I'd always recommend a cast film. OK, so if you're using a calendar film on that, for example, our 2578 film, I don't recommend it for steep channels. I would recommend a cast film um, because they cast films tend to keep shape a little bit better even than the engineered polymeric films. So I would recommend that. Um, you also, you know, you can always use primer in a channel, but remember primer is glue. And when you go to take it off, uh, you're going to have a problem. So hope that helps. If you have any more questions, like I said, you can email me directly. Um, I'm happy to get on the phone with anyone. I'm happy to help anyone uh, with with regards to application. Um, I've got another question here. The rolls of film we use for printing on our EcoSol printer are too loosely rolled and causes misalignment with shifts from side to side. Is there a reason the film is rolled less tightly? Um, I, I assume that um, that this this uh, participant is referring to to Image Perfect, although it could be any film. Um, the answer is no. Um, all films generally are rolled about the same tension. Um, what you will notice, though, with with most films, um, the tension, uh, all these are on automated, all these re-rolls are on automated uh, machines. And they're set to, uh, because of the way they're set up, as you get closer to the core, the, the, they get tighter and tighter. Therefore, at the beginning, they have to be a little bit looser. So, excuse me, you have to be on a, you know, when you're doing the manufacturing, you have to be on a pretty perfect alignment to get it right. Um, if you're having a problem like that with an image perfect film, please report it to your sales rep. Uh, they'll get it directly to me. By the way, um, I'm the factory. So um, the guy who runs our, our plant in Manchester, I talk to him every day on the phone. He's on my speed dial. Um, in fact, after this call, I'm going to get on the phone with him to talk about a couple things. So this is not a situation where if you're buying from, if you're buying Image Perfect, you have to go through, you know, your rep or regional supply, and they have to go and call, you know, their rep for, you know, who who is it, Avery 3M MacTac, and then have to go through their channels. Once you talk to that rep from regional supply, they talk to me. I'm basically the factory. So hopefully by doing that, we can get you responses on these things really quickly. If you're having a specific problem. Uh, please get with the rep. Let them know exactly what that product is. Um, if you've got a, a code on that product on the box or the core, you give it to him and I will check it out and see what we can do. OK, uh, hope that answers that question for you. Um, any other questions right now? All right. It doesn't look like I have any more questions. So like I said, you've got my email address now. Uh, always happy to answer any questions. You can email me personally. Um, if you include a phone number, I'm happy to pick up the phone and talk to you. Um, great. Thank you guys. Appreciate you being here. I apologize about the, uh, the technical difficulties, but hopefully we'll get that sorted out for the future. Um, Megan, Eric, thank you guys. Uh, everyone have a nice day and, uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.